NAD is involved in mechanisms that impact health and function, and its levels depend on a balance between factors that increase it or decrease it. Factors that increase NAD include physical activity, uh, supplementation with NMN or NR, calorie restriction, CR, and then inhibitors of CD38. Now, factors that decrease NAD include aging, uh, physical inactivity or sedentary behavior, and eating too many calories, caloric excess. So uh, how does NAD impact health and function? Well, one mechanism involves sirtuins. So sirtuins are NAD-dependent proteins that can extend lifespan. Uh, more specifically, sirtuins remove acetyl groups from histones and proteins. And there are seven sirtuins, as shown in this uh, picture of the cell. Uh, some are found in the nucleus, the cytosol, and others like sirtuins 3, 4, and 5 are found in mitochondria. So uh, my interest is lifespan, which sirtuins extend lifespan. And in this video, I'm going to talk about the data and show the data for SIRT1 and SIRT6. And then uh, SIRT1 is the most popular sirtuin, but is it the best for extending lifespan? And also, which interventions increase sirtuins? So let's have a look at the data. So first, brain-specific uh, SIRT1 overexpression, so higher levels of SIRT1 only in the brain, extends lifespan. So we're looking, what we're looking at here are, is the survival pro probability on the y-axis plotted against age in days. And this is combined data for both males and females with uh, wild type, be, uh, with the black bar, the dark line, and the uh, mice that have higher levels of SIRT1 in the brain, TG, transgenic. So uh, when putting up the average uh, survival, this is the point where half of the colony has died and half is still alive, we can see that there's a significant extension uh, in lifespan, average lifespan, for brain-specific SIRT1 overexpression, but not an increase in maximal lifespan. Now, uh, with this in mind, what's, you know, it, it, some may have, uh, you, you may have a, an animal model that's got higher levels of SIRT1, but how can we apply this to people? So one way we can do that is with SIRT1 activators. And the most popular SIRT1 activator is resveratrol. So resveratrol was initially shown to extend uh, average lifespan uh, 15 years ago, and that's what we can see here. So when looking at average survival for mice that were fed a high calorie diet, the red line, when compared with mice that were fed the standard diet, the black line, uh, and when compared with uh, animals that were fed the high calorie diet plus resveratrol, the blue line, we can see that having resveratrol uh, in the diet on a high calorie diet uh, extended lifespan when compared with animals that did, did not have uh, resveratrol in their diet. So uh, the obvious question should be, uh, sure, resveratrol was given an extended average lifespan in this mouse model of diet-induced obesity, but how do we know that SIRT1 is involved? So uh, SIRT2ins remove acetyl groups, and a well-known uh, marker of SIRT1 activity is by looking at uh, acetylation of the PGC1-alpha protein, which is shown on the y-axis here. So uh, in the situation where the high-calorie diet was fed, we can see the black bar is very high, which suggests lower SIRT1 activity, especially when considering that SIRT2 has removed acetyl groups. However, in the condition where the high-calorie diet, HC, was uh, fed with resveratrol, the gray bars, we can see that there's a significant reduction in PGC1-alpha acetylation, which suggests that there's higher SIRT1 activity. In this case, it's about 60 to 70 percent higher SIRT1 activity in the uh, mice that were fed resveratrol on that high-calorie diet. All right, so uh, SIRT1 overexpression in brain and SIRT1 activation via resveratrol increase lifespan, but both low and high dose resveratrol have been shown to not extend lifespan. And that's what we're looking at here with data from males on the left, females on the right. And the red arrow in both of these uh, pictures is when they started resveratrol supplementation. So first notice that a, the low dose was resveratrol at a concentration of 300 parts per, parts per million ppm, and then they supplemented the mice with a four-fold higher concentration, 1,200 ppm. So uh, as you can see by the p-values for both the males on the left and the females for the right, these values are higher than 0 0.05, which shows that uh, resver both low and high-dose resveratrol did not significantly extend lifespan in this study. Uh, similarly, SIRT1 overexpression has been shown to not ex affect lifespan in other studies, and that's what's shown here. So again, we're looking at survival uh, percentage on the y-axis plotted against uh, time in months. And in this study, they had two separate lines of SIRT1 overexpressing mice uh, defined as TG, transgenic, A and B, the two different lines. And then they com combined that data. Uh, so we're looking at combined data for males and females on the left, males in the middle, and females on the right. And what we can see based on the p-values is that uh, SIRT1 overexpression did not extend lifespan 
for males and females, males alone, or females alone. So with this in mind, how does SIR T1 compare against SIR T6 for lifespan ext uh, ex extension? And interestingly, a study was just published uh, last week that compared uh, these two sir 2 ones head to head for lifespan. And that's what we can see here. So again, we're looking at survival on the y-axis uh, plotted against age in days, how long the mice lived. So uh, looking at the, the different lines, we can see that the wild type, the normal animals that don't have higher levels of uh, sirtuins are the blue lines. Uh, mice that have higher levels of sirtu uh, sirtuin 1 are in red, higher uh, sirt 6 in green, and then uh, they overexpress over both sirt 1 and sirt 6 and that's the purple line. So first, starting with SIR-T1, the red line, when looking at average survival, we can see that there was no significant, significant increase in lifespan, average or maximal, for SIR-T1 overexpressing mice when compared with wild type. But what about SIR-T6? And we can see that shift in the lifespan curves to the right. So having higher levels of SIR-T6 significantly increased both, both average lifespan and maximal lifespan. And this is in the pool data for males and females. So how does the data look separately in males and females? Is, is this effect driven by one one gender or the other. Well, we can see that the, uh, this effect is found in both males and females for the SIRT-T6 uh, overexpressing mice. So average lifespan and maximal lifespan were increased in both the males and in the female mice that had higher levels of SIRT-T6. So based on this data, we could uh, conclude that CIR, uh, having higher levels of SIRT-T6 may be better than SIRT-T1 for extending lifespan. Now, also, also as an interesting aside, note that the purple curves where they overexpress both one SIRT1 and SIRT6 did not extend lifespan uh, 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 longer uh, than SIRT6 alone, which suggests that these uh, having higher levels of SIRT1 and SIRT6 is not additive. That having higher SIRT6 alone uh, is required for that lifespan extending effect. Now, other studies have shown SIRT6 uh, can improve lifespan, and that's what sh that's what's uh, shown here. Uh, and, in this, and in this study, they engineered mice to have higher levels of SIRT6 in two separate groups of mice, defined as line 55 on the, on the left and line 108 on the right. So starting with the uh, line 55, uh, we can see that uh, there was an increased average and maximal lifespan in these male mice that had higher levels, were engineered to have higher levels of SIRT6. And then for the line 108, there was an increase in average, but not maximal lifespan. But uh, this isn't a perfect story because for whatever reason, lifespan in the SIRT6 transgenic female mice was not extended. So with this in mind, how does SIRT6 extend lifespan? Well, SIRT6 has been shown to positively affect many hallmarks of aging. So starting from SIRT6, uh, we can see that it's involved in mechanisms that uh, maintain telomere length. And that's important because telomere length uh, isn't maintained during aging, it shortens. Uh, now, CERT having relatively higher levels of SIRT6 also are involved in mechanisms that reduce oxidative stress. Oxidative stress increases during aging, so uh, by uh, SIRT6 being able to uh, be involved in mechanisms that reduce oxidative stress, that's potentially important for aging. Now, uh, SIRT6 is also involved in mechanisms that promote DNA damage repair, and this is whether uh, this uh, is whether uh, uh, SIRT6 is involved in mechanisms that repair single-strand DNA breaks and double-strand DNA breaks. Uh, SIRT6 is also involved in mechanisms that reduce inflammation, including uh, reducing pro-inflammatory cytokines such as IL-1 beta, IL-6, and TNF-alpha, while increasing expression of the anti-inflammatory cytokine IL-10. And finally, uh, SIRT6 is involved in mechanisms that promote autophagy, which also declines during aging. So can SIRT6 then be increased through diet, exercise, or supplements? You know, having transgenic animals that are engineered to have that is nice, but can we activate SIRT6 to gain some of these benefits on aging and potentially lifespan. So first, SIRT6 is increased by calorie restriction, and this is a study done in male mice. If anybody's come across calorie restriction studies in female mice, female mice, please leave a comment. Uh, I wasn't able to find that. So we're looking at levels of SIRT6, protein levels uh, of SIRT6 on the y-axis, divided by uh, a loading control, uh, gap DH. So when compared with mice that were able, uh, allowed to eat as much as they want, AL, ad lib, we can see that the mice that were fed 30% less calories, and in this case, these were old mice, 24-month-old 20 uh, mice, which is equivalent to about a 73-year-old person, we can see that there was about a 50% increase in protein levels of SIRT6 in the mice that were 30% CR. Now, this implicates a, a role for diet, or at least calories, on, uh, on SIRT6 levels. Are there more specific dietary components that can increase uh, uh, dietary components that can increase SIRT6? And one of them is ergothionine. 
Uh, now, ergothionine has been dubbed a longevity vitamin, and, if you, and I have a video on it, so if you missed that, I'm going to link to it in the right corner. So in this study, they looked at CERT-T6 protein expression, and this was an in vitro study in endothelial cells. So starting with cells that uh, did not have high glucose, this is uh, the control cell, so CTR, adding a, a, high, a relatively high amount of glucose to these cells, to endothelial cells, resulted in lower levels of CERT-T6 protein. Now, adding ergothionine to the control cells didn't impact CERT-T6 levels, but in the cells that had high glucose and ergothionine, we can see that CERT-T6 levels were significantly increased when compared to high glucose alone. So wh why is this important? What does it have to do with aging? Well, glucose levels, systemic levels, circulating levels of glucose increase during aging, which raises the question, can ergothionine increase CERT-T6 in older adults? As glu glucose levels increase during aging, older adults more often than not have higher levels of plasma, le uh, higher plasma levels of glucose. So there aren't any randomized controlled trials, RCTs, that have tested this yet, but I'd stay tuned. Uh, hopefully those studies will get done. Now, there are many other CERT-T6 activators, and I've listed them here, and uh, there are so many of them that I'll probably make another video uh, in terms of which foods are rich, uh, you know, are rich for each of these metabolites. But uh, notice that two of them right off the top, quercetin and luteolin, are known CD38 inhibitors, so they're involved in mechanisms that increase NAD. So not only may, do they increase, involve, not only are they involved in mechanism that, mechanisms that increase NAD, that they're known CERT-T6 activators, they're also involved in mechanisms that activate CERT-T6. Uh, so you're getting a double whammy of higher NAD, which is potentially good for health and lifespan, and also higher CERT-T6. So what about exercise? So in this data, we can see that uh, an acute bout of exercise, in this case, this was uh, 30 minutes of running at 80% of VO2 max, and this is a relatively small study done in 24-year-old 24, 24 men. Uh, so acute, uh, acute exercise resulted in about uh, two-fold higher expression of CERT-T6 levels in white blood cells. So uh, blood samples were obtained before exercise, immediately after exercise, so post-exercise, and then one hour after exercise. And what we can see when compared with both pre-exercise and post-exercise is that the CERT-T levels were approximately doubled as a result of 30 minutes of running at 80% of the VO2 max on the treadmill. Now, it isn't just uh, aerobic exercise and acute exercise, so one bout of exercise. Uh, CERT-T6 has also been shown to be increased after 12 weeks of resistance exercise training, so strength training, in 66-year-old men in also a relatively small study, 30 subjects. But nonetheless, it shows an important role for exercise, whether it's cardiovascular training or strength training, to uh, potentially increase CERT-T levels in people. All right, that's uh, all I've got for now. If you made it to the end, I hope you enjoyed the video, and have a great day.